I was kind of puzzled what I uh, what, what what topic I should choose, and I uh, chose this uh, this thing about logarithms. But now looking at what happens at the conference, I changed my mind. So uh, yeah, if, I, and I I prefer to speak about some uh, not so recent work, but maybe more to the point of the meeting. So um, I'll tell you about the uh, denominators. of rational associators. And this is a joint work with uh, my former student, Marsha Potkapaeva and uh, Pavel Severo. Um, well, here there are the in 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 the mini course in the mini courses that we have here probably in in the in the mini course of professor Furusha, associates will appear soon but unfortunately i i'm speaking already now so we'll have to <laughs> I'll, I'll have to tell you a little bit about associates to introduce the topic so the plan of my talk is is as follows. I'll start with the reminder of the Lie algebra TN that uh, you already seen in this conference and the definition of associators and some a little bit of background information. I guess there will be much more of it in the in the other talks. And then I'll give you some results about denominators and um, well, maybe some ideas of proofs, if time permits, and possibly some open problems. So let me start with uh, this story of TN. Um, so we have already seen it in, I think, several talks, and particularly in Leila's talk yesterday. So the uh, Lie algebra of uh, infinitesimal pure braids. Well, that's supposed to be a, a gothic letter. Well, we'll see to what extent I will be able to keep to this style. And um, <laughs> It is defined in terms of generators and relations. And the generators and relations are inspired by the presentation of the pure braid group. So the generators are symbols with two indices, t, i, j, where i and j run from 1 to n. And the set of relations is as follows. First of all, but there are no generators uh, with the with the repeating indices. The generators are symmetric, so they do not. So Tij is equal to Tji. The generators, a pair of generators with a quadruple of distinct indices ij and kl have a vanishing Cli bracket. And finally, there is a famous non-trivial relation which says that tij with a bracket with the sum of tik plus tjk vanishes. So that's the set of that's the set of relations. Here there is a, there is a small piece of notation which is convenient to introduce for the future. So 
such a combination TIK uh, plus TJK is sometimes denoted T. I, J, comma, K, where here you have a double index. So when you have a double or triple index, this, this, this just means that you should take a sum of the generators where you choose any, any of these indices once. Perhaps uh, some information about Tn for n small. So when n equal to 2, C2 is simply the abelian Lie algebra with generator C12. So here maybe I should have said from the very beginning, we do it all over the field of characteristic zero. At some point we also use, use finite fields, but that, then, then I'll tell you. So for n equals three, so T3, well, there are two presentations. Let, let me give you two presentations. On the one hand, this is a semi-direct sum of T2 and a freely algebra with generators T13 and T23. So you take the new generators that you add when you pass from T2 to T3 and you take a semi-direct sum with the previous one. It's also, it turns out that it's also isomorphic and it's going to be important for us soon to the abelian Lie algebra with one generator, which is just the sum of all three generators, one, two, one, three, and two, three, plus a free Lie with any choice of generators. Usually, one chooses uh, one, two, and two, three, but you can choose any of them. And then uh, we need one more. Let me write for n equal four. So the first presentation has an analog for any n, and I think it was also, also mentioned in the previous talks. So it's a semi-direct sum of T3 and a freely algebra with generators T14, C24, T34. Right. Okay. So now, um, with this setup, we can introduce the notion of uh, associators. So this definition of associators, it is due to Dreamfield originally, but in the present form, it's a combination of the Dreamfield definition and the theorem of Furusho, and probably he will speak in more detail in his mini course about it. So this, this is a kind of uh, shortcut definition. So, um, Phi, which is a non-commutative formal power series in two variables. So this, this is supposed to stand for non-commutative uh, power series in two variables. Um, sometimes people say Dreamfold associator if it satisfies the following conditions. So the condition number one, phi is group-like. That is, if you apply the standard co-product, which simply maps the generators, the generator x to x tends to one plus one tends to x, y to y tends to one plus one tends to why? So you got this group-like property. Or equivalently, maybe for some of you this, this would be more comfortable way to, to speak of it. Phi is the exponential 
of a free Lie algebra in generators X and Y. So it admits a logarithm, and then the corresponding expression is, 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 uh, is in the free Lie algebra. Here I should say that whenever I speak of a free Lie algebra, I think of it as degree completed. So in principle, infinite, infinite expressions Allowed. So the second condition is as follows. Phi starts in the following way. It starts with 1 in degree 0. Then there is no contribution in degree 1. And then there is 1 over 24 times the commutator of generators X and Y. And then there are higher degree terms. Where by degree I mean just the number of letters, uh, just the number of letters x and y. Right. So here for the first time we see a denominator. So this one over twenty-four, and of course this is a histor historical normalization. But we'll come back to it in some minutes. Finally, there is a condition 3, which is uh, the Pentagon equation. We've seen a version of the Pentagon equation in the previous talk, so this is a similar equation to what we've seen, slightly, slightly different version of it. And, well, let me try to write it down. I'm not sure it's going to be correct, but, well, so, so it's a nonlinear equation of phi. So basically phi square is equal to phi cube, um, where the funny indices where the funny indices mean the following. So phi 1 to 3 is phi, which is a power series in two non-commuting variables, and we substitute there t12 and t23, and where the indices repeat, for instance, phi 1, 2, 3, 4, sorry, we'll get phi C123, T34, and so on. One, two, three, four. So here T123, three, three, four. So you take the first index and the second index for the first T, and then the second and the third for the second one. Uh, so the whole equation takes values in the exponential of T4. So that's why we kind of, so that's why we, we, had, we had this T4 here. Okay. Well, I guess probably I don't need to convince you too much that associators are important objects, but just, just to say some words. So associators play a role in many fields of mathematics, so you will see in Professor Furush's mini course the relation to multiple zeta values. We'll see a little bit in, in my talk the relation to low dimensional topology. It's also related to the whole range of quantization or deformation problems in various fields of algebra. So, uh, in any event, solutions uh, to, this, uh, to this algebraic problem play an important role. So, let me give a brief, very brief summary of what is known about associators. I, I'm not going to list all the facts, only the facts that um, I'll need in the talk. So, um, first of all, 
famously it's known uh, that there is a solution of a complex numbers called phi kz. So this is due to Dreamfold. And um, interestingly enough, uh, the construction, how, how Dreamfold obtained the solution, uh, so the construction is inspired by uh, quantum field theory. So the, the solution doesn't come from the algebraic formulation of the problem. Uh, instead, one, one, one comes with some arguments coming from some other fields of, uh, in this case, from mathematical physics. So perhaps a bit closer to the uh, um, um, uh, to the topic of uh, this conference, the Grotendieck, the, 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 pro, uh, the pro unipotent completion of the Grotendieck Teichmuller group over the field K acts on the set of associators corresponding to the, uh, to the field K. And we're going to see, uh, we're going to see, we're going to see a glimpse of this action um, in some minutes from now. So um, maybe the, uh, the third fact that we need, so there are associators there are associators over rational numbers. And uh, so the existence theorem is due to Dreamfold. It's, it's more or less based on the fact that there are solutions of a C. From this one can, in a relatively easy argument, deduce that there are solutions also of a Q. Now, uh, so there are two constructions of um, more or less explicit, or one can say explicit solutions or algorithms, how one can obtain those solutions over Q. There is one, I would, I don't know how to formulate it correctly, probably a proposal by Ekal. So I, I, I don't know to what extent it's, it's really concrete in the sense that you can, whatever, to what extent it's, uh, it's proven and to what extent one can use it. But at least there is some proposal on the market. And recently there is an algorithm algorithm by Francis Brown, which is based on, on his theorem on the Hoffman basis in formal, in the, in, in, in the formal, or in the motivic uh, multiple zeta values. So, uh, maybe the last fact that I want to, that I want to mention is as follows. So, you see uh, here the conditions on associators. We have this condition of being group-like, we have this condition which is essentially a normalization, and we have uh, this, uh, this pentagon equation, this phi square equal to phi cube. So in principle what we can do, we can try to solve these equations degree by degree, and in particular we can try to solve these equations up to some degree. We can decide that, okay, we are not interested in solving the full problem, we can say we are interested only in solving the problem up to degree k. So let's denote associ k associators up to degree k. So starting from degree k plus 1, we don't know what happens. Or we can just cut them at degree k. So uh, of course, if we have a true associator, we can always uh, we can always throw away the tail. So we're going to have a map from associators to associators up to degree k. Then the theorem of Dreamfeld says that this map is subjective. In other words, so th th this has a, a, a nice practical nice practical consequences. Imagine that you found a solution of these equations up to degree k. Then you may wonder, does it make sense to look for extension of this solution for degree k plus 1? Or maybe, may, maybe for some associators up to degree k, there would be no tail which would, 
which would eventually lead you, perhaps you don't know how to construct it, but perhaps there is no, just no tail which would lead to a true solution. But it says that wh whatever k you take, if you found a solution up to degree k, you can always continue. Okay, whether you can do it practically or not, that's up to our skills, but uh, in, in, th in, in principle it is always possible. Yeah. Yeah, I would think so. Any field of degree zero, of uh, characteristic zero, I would. Yeah, yeah, I would think so. Yeah, probably. Let me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. I think I think I understood the question. I okay. Let. Sorry? No, but I mean any f any field of characteristic zero. No, no, any field of characteristic zero. Sure. Okay. So now uh, the question that I, I want to address in this talk. So we know that rational associators exist, but perhaps we want to know something more about them. And one question, well, of course, would be the best to write an explicit formula which would give you all the details of such a rational associator. But, uh, okay, there are some suggestions on the market to what extent the explicit is, remains to be seen. Now, uh, let's address a different question. Can we learn at least something about possible denominators of such rational solutions? So, um, so let me... So let me give you some results about it. So there will be essentially two results and two, two possible applications. Well, we'll see to what extent they are convincing. So first of all, let me introduce a little bit of notation. Let P be a prime and I'll denote by BP of n the following integer. Well, at least at first it will look a bit funny, but then we'll discuss what it means. So we take P over P minus 1 squared, multiply by n and subtract 1 over P minus 1, and take the integer part of it. So um, just a small remark, uh, BP of n is equal to zero for n smaller than p minus one, is equal to one for n equal to p minus one. So for the first time, you get some non-zero result equal to one if n is equal to p minus one, and it is greater or equal to one for n bigger than p minus one. So that's, that's a feature of BPA of N, which will be uh, important for us. So our first result is the following theorem. So uh, there is uh, an even, I'll, I'll say in a second what even means. Associator over Q such that, let me see how I write it. So phi belongs to the following set, one plus sum of n from one to infinity, D of n inverse. Of course, one can be replaced by two in any event associated start in degree two. And here we take z, so we take those uh, power series with coefficients in z, uh, and maybe I can even forget here the formal power series because in any event I will restrict it to degree n. Right, so. So basically we prescribe denominators in each degree and d of n is equal to a product of a p 
of p to this power v p of n. So um, maybe just one word, what even means. So this is just the naive definition that one can think about. Phi of minus x minus y is equal to phi of x, y. Okay, this doesn't matter so much, but sometimes people are interested in associators with special properties, so kind of just, just to make sure that uh, these denominators, they, they pass this test. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. This, this is so. There is, uh, there is even an even associate, even an even associator with such, <laughs> with such a denominator estimate. So, um, an example. Let's see what happens when n is equal to 2. Uh, well, now there will be only two primes for which uh, we, should be, we should be worried. So uh, b2 of 2 in easy calculation shows that it's equal to 3. And as promised by, by this formula, b3 of 2 is equal to 1. So which means that the denominator d of 2 is equal to 2 cubed times 3, which is exactly the 24, which matches, which might matches our normalization in the definition of associators. Of course, for other values of n, you will have some, some other expressions, but uh, right. Maybe uh, one, one small remark. So uh, just to give you an idea what, how this expression, what, what, what this expression is, or how, how close it is to something that we know. Uh, so, so you can give the following estimate for factorials, because usually denominators in this business, since we already have some exponentiation of things, we have to compare with denominators that we get from the exponential function. So, uh, uh, so there, is, there is the following standard estimate for the, uh, uh, for the n factorial, where a p of n is equal to the just integer part of uh, n minus 1 over p minus 1. So you see it is, uh, uh, so this estimate, this BP, BP of n, it is very close to the, uh, to the estimate for the factorial. It grows a little bit faster. It turns out, well, I guess the ideal would be to, to have an estimate with this AP of, uh, of N, but uh, either we cannot prove it or maybe it is impossible. For sure, it wouldn't work for, for, for N small, like for instance here uh, in the factorial we wouldn't get this cube, but uh, the question is whether for, for bigger N, whether this is really an optimal estimate. That, that we don't really know. You see, it looks kind of interestingly close to the uh, to the, to the estimate here. The coefficient in this linear function here is 1 over p minus 1. Here it is p over p minus 1 squared. So difficult to say. At least we don't know. That's, that's what we can prove. And OK. Um, now perhaps uh, one more small definition. And then I'll show you two applications uh, and maybe one more theorem. So, uh, definition, let's say that natural associators are associators which verify the denominator estimate. So, associators such as in this, uh, in this theorem.
So then one more theorem says the following. Similar to the Greenfield statement, So there is, there is, of course, a map from uh, natural associators to all orders to natural associators to order k. And it's still surjective. So even with, uh, so even with, uh, uh, with this denominator estimate, once you have something which satisfies this denominator estimate up to some uh, degree k, you can still continue uh, with the associator which does satisfy the denominator estimate to all degrees. No, but there it's the kind of, uh, then I would need to break something. <laughs> Verifying this estimate, the estimate of the theorem. Yeah, there is, yeah, so if you multiply by, by this number, then everything, uh, all the, all the non-commutative monomials, they, they get integer coefficients. Okay. So now I would like to show you two, two applications of uh, sorry uh, which one uh, you mean whether whether one can yeah, one can introduce, one can, uh, yeah, one, so, you, you, you mean this guy, or the, yeah, 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 right, one can, one can also introduce a GRT with denominators, and it acts, but, yeah, I think it's also a torso, I would, I would need to recall, yeah, I, th I, th I think, I think so, but let, let, that, that part, maybe I should, I should check, Prob probably, Okay. So, uh, the first application I want to show to you uh, is about, uh, um, about the lo low dimensional, is about low dimensional topology. So, an application. to the so-called Kinsevich universal not invariant. Uh, so recall that um, Kinsevich defined a map from So from the isotopy classes of oriented knots, so the maps from S1 to R3 to so-called core diagrams. In fact, core diagrams with rational coefficients, as we'll see in a second, and those core diagrams just to, well, we, we, we won't need much detail, but just, just to to, to, to set up the stage. So the core diagrams are uh, Q-linear combinations of the following uh, diagrams. So you have uh, an oriented circle. On this oriented circle, you choose a number of 
pairs of points, and you connect them by the so-called cords. Uh, so only the topology of the situation is important. So it doesn't, doesn't matter, you can move those points. And uh, you divide it by two relations. One relation is as follows. Whenever you have something like this, there is just a single chord without no other chord ends in the middle, it's equal to zero. And there is one more, which is, which is the famous 4T relation. Let me, well, for those of you who are doing uh, low dimensional topology, you know it much better than I do, but well, let me still write it down. So there are uh, four fragments which are like that. So there is, uh, right, so there are three, three parts of the circle and there are two chords which are joining them and here you cross and here you do the same with the other piece. Right, so the sum of four terms. So, um, so uh, this invar the, the invariant defined by Kansai, which is universal in some class of invariants, so-called finite type invariants. So the theorem that we proved is as follows. For any knot, I of k lives in the sum over n, d of n inverse, times chord diagrams with n chords. And now the coefficients, uh, coefficients are integers. So th these are where dn are just the same, dn are the same denominators uh, as we have seen before. So uh, I don't want to speak much about the the proof because that would require like understanding the relation between uh, between the Kansevich uh, invariant and associators, but just just a small indication. So the invariant I can be can be constructed. So there are several constructions on the market, but one of the constructions is feeding phi, a solution of Dreamfield's axioms into some machinery, and this machinery produces for you this invariant I. What is, uh, what is important here is a theorem which says that uh, uh, you can use any solution of the Dreamfield's axioms. So you can, you can choose any phi, and you always get the same the same invariant i. So if you found a very good associator, an associator about which you know something, then you will know something for something about this uh, invariant i. So that's why if we're taking a natural associator, an associator which uh, satisfies the denominator estimates, it is, uh, it is understandable then this invariant i of k might also satisfy some estimates, and it turns out that it's exactly the same denominators that you're getting there. Um, so uh, I think, actually, this is one of the first results about those denominators uh, in this uh, Kansevich story. There was a previous result by Tangle, but there I think it was, I, I, I don't quite remember, there those uh, uh, so, so here this BP of n is linear and I think he had maybe some quartic estimate or quadratic, I don't quite remember, a different, a different degree polynomial in n.
Well, I don't know. Potentially, potentially, yes. I, I, I don't, I don't quite know. But for sure, right? Since you, uh, with this, you can be extracting integers, right? From, from the construction. You know, now, kind of, once you have an estimate, you know how to, how, to, how to extract integers. So, well, then I don't know. Maybe we should turn to experts in low dimensional topology to answer this. I, I don't know. Yeah, the, uh, uh, yeah, 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 right. Um, you mean together with these, g the, the, the core diagrams? Yeah. Uh, Hoff algebra, yeah, the algebra structure, yes. Hoff algebra, I don't quite recall. Okay. Okay. So, um, let me show you one more application, possibly a little bit less convincing, but still interesting. In fact, uh, our work, it came from, from, from this application. So, and it makes um, it makes a link with uh, with various equations in the free Lie algebras that we already seen, uh, in particular equation equation for so-called special derivations. Um, So the so-called Jacobson element. So let me recall that uh, the following element in the universal enveloping algebra x plus y to the power p minus x to the power p minus y to the power p where p is a prime, if you look at it mod p, turns out to be an element of a freely algebra in generators x, y over the finite field fp. So right, a priori, that's, uh, that's an element of high degree, but it, uh, it turns out to be an element of degree one if you take it mod p, right? So that's, that's a classical but non-trivial non fact. So now let's, let's take phi non-commutative, sure, non All terms, yeah. X plus Y to the power P. Multiply X plus Y P times. Right? So a priori, that's an element of the, uh, of the free associative algebra in two generators. Now I take it mod P, so I throw it away on the coefficients, right? So here, coefficients are all integers. I take it mod P. I obtain some expression. This coefficient's now in FP. Now it turns out that this, uh, uh, the, the, this guy is uh, uh, primitive under the co-product. So it's an element, it's, uh, it's a linear combination of multi-brackets. Right? So that's some whatever. As, as I say, some very classical but still high. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm. <laughs> so now let's uh, let's learn something new about this JP. 
<laughs> so uh, let's let's say phi is a natural associator, an associator which satisfies the denominator estimate. So phi is a sum over n of its graded components. In particular, for the prime p, for the first time we'll see it in the denominator in degree p minus 1, right? So we know that phi p minus 1 is equal to potentially 1 over p times something. Now, uh, let's denote by uh, p minus 1. Let's denote by sigma p minus 1 the residue. So the expression mod p. And here, let's assume we, we allow ourselves to to, to, to invert all the, other, all the other primes. So we're only interested now in the prime p. So it turns out that it's going to be, an, again, it will define an element of the free Lie algebra over the finite field fp. So this residue, right? So the, for the first time, we see, we see this denominator 1 over p there, and we take the residue. We're interested what, when for the first time, it, it proves to be not, uh, not integral uh, over the integer p. So now, just, uh, uh, just a small piece of notation. Let me introduce two Lie polynomials, which are just the versions of this guy p minus 1, minus x minus y x, and sigma p minus 1, minus x minus y y. So it's a bit annoying that one needs to introduce this notation, but, well. So let me formulate a theorem which links the Jacobson element and this residue of the of a natural associator. So theorem. So that's the expression that you you often see in particular, I think you have seen it in Leila's talk. So, and typically you want to put zero on the right hand side. Here it's not zero, instead it's a Jacobson element. So it turns out that um, this expression gives you the Jacobson element, and in particular This tells you that this residue is non-vanishing, right? Because we know that the Jacobson element is non-vanishing, so um, so this guy cannot be cannot be zero. So we do have this residue. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Now, now I will write the second equation, and the second equation says the following. So let me write it down, and then I'll I'll introduce notation. So there is the following funny identity satisfied by A and B. That's another linear equation. Here I should explain what is AX and what is BY. So you see, so these are, these are Lie words or Lie polynomials, but uh, we can also think of them again as uh, elements of the associative algebra. In the associative algebra, 
uh, all the words, they end on some letter. They start on some letter and they end on some letter. Let's say AX is a part of A ending on the letter X. And BY is a part of B ending on the letter Y. And then what is this cyclic? Cyclic means that we take words and we consider their modular cyclic permutations. So in particular, cyclic of xy is equal to cyclic of yx. Or we can say we consider the associative algebra modular commutators. So that's cyclic words as a standard, standard wording for such construction. So then it turns out that one can compute, one can compute this, this sum. Why is it, okay, this, this was interesting, this is not clear, why, why, why is it interesting? In fact, the question came from Michel Duflor. And uh, Duflor had in mind a kind of FP version of the so-called Kashivara Vern conjecture. So uh, the Kashivara Vern conjecture is a kind of uh, uh, set of, of of two equations, but then in characteristic zero, which are somewhat similar to to, to these equations. So there. Instead of JP, you have the Campbell-Hausdorff series. And here, in, instead of this expression, you also have some kind of, some kind of uh, cyclic expression which comes from the Jacobians of the exponential map. So, and, and the kashivara vern conjecture is important in harmonic analysis or in applications to least theory. Here, up to now, it's not, it's not known, it's not clear whether this Duflos question, what, what, what is its relevance? It's, it, but it's, it, these are beautiful formulas. Then, well, whether they're going to find some, some kind of convincing application remains to be seen, but, but at least they are there. Also, what is interesting, now we have a control over the residue in front of 1 over p, but of course then le sometimes later on there will be 1 over p square and 1 over p cube showing up. And uh, well, we don't know, but probably, probably we can say some, some kind of higher analogs, some more sophisticated analogs about those higher residues that we'll see there, probably, or maybe not. So up to now, we were only able to, to say something about the residue when P shows up for the first time. Yeah, exactly. So this is degree P minus 1. This is degree P minus 1. And uh, fortunately, the right-hand side also degree P minus 1, which is certainly good news. And here, degree P minus 1 plus 1, which is P, and here it's of degree if degree P, so the degrees match very well. Um, right, so um, I'm not sure, maybe the, uh, the chairman should, it, should advise me. I, uh, I can say a couple of words about the proofs. Of course, we started a bit later, but on the other hand, it's midday. No, but okay, no, but I mean. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fine. So then, uh, then maybe just just some words about the um, some words about the proofs. No, no, but I mean, uh, no, no extremism.
Sorry? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yes. So phi phi p minus one is uh, is uh, uh, is the, uh, the the contribution in the associator, but then it may have a denominator p, right? So I multiply by this denominator to 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 have this guy with p integer coefficients. So the coefficients of this guy are, are p integers, right? So 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 so, so, so uh, now I I take it I take it mod p. Because otherwise, it's not it's not completely well defined the residue. And now, so these 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 guys are expressions with coefficients mod p. So this p is the first entry. No, I mean not not exactly in z. It may have other. You see, it may have other denominators. Like for instance, if p is equal to five, then maybe this guy has one over three. But then one should invert it in. Right. Yeah, maybe I didn't state it very in a very clean way. Sorry. Um, so the um, ideas of proofs. Basically, there are three things which enter into the game. So one thing, which is probably the, the, main, the main point, but uh, that's, that's the one that I guess most of you know much, much better than I do. So uh, um, let's say we choose some P and uh, We consider, we consider this map over p addix. So we forget about all the other p's. And here, we're going to have the psychoatomic character. So the, the psychoatomic character here can be, can be uh, factored through this, through this map. Right? So elements here in GT, we know they are of the form la. Sorry? Yeah, yeah, but, but here, right. But here, there would be, for the, on the image, right? On the, on the image of this guy, yeah, maybe. Okay, let's, uh, let's, let's, put it, let's put it this way, here. And it commutes. Okay. So, so right, this map. Is just a map to the first to the first component, and it is known that this map is subjective. So you get all the elements in ZP star here. So I must say that this part we're kind of using as a black box. So you you guys probably know much better what what's going on here. So the second thing is a proposition, which I don't know. Again, maybe for the like, what would the, act, the experts say? Um, is a following proposition. Suppose lambda f is uh, is an element of the group G T, such that lambda. is not a root of unity. Then there is a unique phi in associator with the same coefficients, which satisfies which satisfies the standard equation. In fact, that's here that we see the glimpse 
of the action of, uh, of GT on associators. So there, is, so there is a unique associator which is fixed by the action of, uh, of this element. I'm not sure to what extent, well, is it, is it like obvious for the experts or is it not obvious? We know that to an associator corresponds a one parameter subgroup inside GT. So that we know. We know that associators are in one-to-one -one correspondence with the elements of the Lie algebra GT. Now, in this way, I don't quite know. I haven't seen the statement in the literature, but of course, it's of a similar nature. So then, uh, what happens, we're taking, we're taking some good elements here in ZP star, we're taking the corresponding elements which come from uh, uh, from the absolute Galois group, and we are constructing using this lemma. Associators over QP, and they turn out to be natural. So if you if you use this construction and then use this lemma to construct this proposition to construct associators they will turn out to be natural, natural periodic associators. So they will satisfy this estimate for the given P. And then the last step is to uh, assemble from these periodic associators one rational associator. And this is more or less the, uh, the, 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 this is not very complicated. This is more or less the Chinese remainder theorem. So you can, you can turn the nonlinear problem into a linear problem, and for a linear problem, you can, you can use the um, more, more or less the, uh, the naive arguments. Right. Um, let me finish. No, 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 we, no, no, this is just, just a product of lambda and x. Lambda is, uh, is a number, x is a generator. No. Well, um, Well, there are some obvious questions to ask. So I told you something about den denominators. It's difficult to say whether it's optimal, but it's probably close to, to being optimal, right? Because of the comparison with the exponential. Now, well, of course, it would be interesting to say something about numerators. For instance, if one could have estimated numerators, then uh, computing associators up to some degree would turn into a really finite problem, right? You know the denominator, if you have some estimate on the numerator, then, well, you can probably make some finite calculation up to, up to some degree. Um, also, of course, it would be interesting to have more explicit formulas for those natural associators. So the, for the solution of Brown, it's, it's not quite known, but probably, it might, uh, let's say, w w what I got from the discussion with Francis, it, it's possible that for, for one prime, P equal to two, it might be like natural. But for the other primes, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it, it looks unlikely, because the Brown's algorithm is very much centered on, 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 on P equal to two. For the other primes, difficult to say. So. Can one get explicit formulas? It's not quite known. And of course, well, an interesting question, whether there would be some applications of this Jacobson element story. The story is beautiful, but well, what it is about, we, we, don't, we don't understand yet. I think I, I, I don't use this time till 28 minutes. Let's... <laughs>